Well, praise the Lord. Amen. And we welcome you to Love Alive Ministries, where Jesus is Lord all the time. Amen. There's a scripture we've been reciting since the beginning of the year, and we're going to continue with that today. I made a mistake on Christmas Day, but I'm going to correct that. It's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Amen. And the scripture is... Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read a scripture today, and Brother Devin is going to come with a prayer, and I was told to give my best scripture, so I got to Go to my, go to my, uh, you know, we all have a go-to. I have to go to my go-to scripture. And my go-to scripture is out of Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 39. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. In whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, and all these things. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus singing. No, not one. No, could heal all our souls diseases singing no not one no not one no not one cause you know Jesus knows all about our struggles and he will guide us 
us to the day is done, O oh Lord. There's not a friend like the holy Jesus singing. No, not one. No, not one. No. Let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for allowing us to gather here again today, whether it be via Facebook or via in person, via the conference call. Lord, we thank you for keeping us through 2020 as a year. We know we only got a couple days left, Lord, but we thank you for the victory that you have already given to us, Lord. We thank you for keeping us through this pandemic and allowing us to still gather and, and commune and, and just be together as a church family, Lord. We thank you for keeping us all together. We thank you for not letting things fall apart because we know that with you all things are possible and that we have already won. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done in 2020. We thank you for the things that you're going to do in 2021. And we just thank you, Lord, because we know that all things with you are well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I told Satan, 
get a day behind. Get a day behind. Oh, because victory today is mine. Oh, there's a storm cloud over the ocean, and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, there's a storm cloud over the ocean, and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, drift away, oh, drift away, oh, you will surely drift away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely Drift away, oh, drift away, oh, drift away, oh, you will surely drift away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. And there's a storm cloud. Oh, the ocean, and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, drift away, y'all. Oh. Drift away, oh, you will surely drift away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Amen. 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 At this time, it's fellowship time. We welcome you to Love Alive Ministry again, and we ask that you also reach out to somebody right now and share your love. Amen. They're waiting to hear from you. They need to hear from you. Amen. Be a blessing. God bless you. Fellowship time. Share with somebody right now.
pray that you took the opportunity to reach out to somebody, whether you text them, you called them, you emailed them, you tweeted with them, however you socialize and get a hold of them. We pray that you took that opportunity. Amen. It's tithes and offering time. There are many ways that you can give here at Love Alive Ministries. Um, there should be up on the screen. Amen. We have a P.O. box you can mail to. You can go online. You can cash app. You can go to the website. Isn't God good? He made a lot of ways that we can continue to give. Amen. It's tithes and offering time. Amen. Father, we come before you just to say thank you. We thank you for blessing us with all that you have provided unto us. And we thank you for giving us a heart to love you even the more, to give back to you, to show that we trust you. Help us, Father, to love you even the more. Help us to bless you as we bless the house, as we bless someone. We thank you for all things. It is in the mighty name of Jesus and his will that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Just a few quick announcements, and then we're going to have a song, and we're going to get out of the way for the preacher, which will be Reverend Dukes. Amen, amen. Merry Christmas to you all, and a happy New Year's. Amen. We will be having live stream on New Year's Eve. Amen. More details to follow, but we will be doing a live stream, which we can update the time on our website. Also, I want to thank everyone at Love Alive for Christmas. Merry Christmas for sharing your love. Amen. So many wonderful gifts that you shared. Amen. I appreciate you for your prayers, your cards. I appreciate I got some nice gloves. I got some nice money that fits in my glove. I got some nice crystals to make my skin feel good. I got a nice mug when I'm laying in my tub and I'm getting my skin feeling good. I got so much to be thankful for. And I have you. Thank you so much, Love Alive. Amen. Amen. All righty. We are going to come with an A selection, and then we'll be followed by the preacher, Reverend Dukes. Amen. Get ready, get ready.
devil and tell the truth. But listening to the Sunday school lesson this morning and laying on overseer's lap at the Sunday school this morning, I began to feel so much better. It's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. It'll make you feel better. It'll make you feel better. And I just wanted, maybe somebody needed to hear that this morning. Maybe somebody needed to hear that this morning. We just celebrated Jesus' birthday a couple days ago. Amen. But isn't it ironic how we received all these wonderful gifts. But what? Mm. What gift did you give Jesus? The men just saying, 
a song about Jesus who gave his life for us. <laughs> So, the question is, and it's not part of my sermon, it's just the Holy Spirit speaking right now. What gift did you give Jesus when he gave his life? When he went through suffering, when he came down and took on flesh to go through for us. What gift did you give him? Somebody need to tell the Lord thank you. Thank you Lord. So much is going on. We are, we are close to the end of a thing. Amen. <laughs> end of a year. End of some things. End of relationships. I don't know what your end is today. But uh, we are closer to the end of a thing in 2020. Yeah. And there's a word from the Lord. Amen? Amen? There is a word from the Lord this morning. And for a subject, we'll be using this one thing. Amen? If you, not if you. You should have your Bible in front of you. Amen. If not, unlock your cell phone. Amen? Amen? And go to the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Philippians, chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And the word of God says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Turn to God our Father. We come this morning to say thank you. Oh God, we thank you for the early rise. Oh God, we thank you for your, how you kept us and prepared us. Thank you, oh God, for the, the pressing our spirit, not dwindling or fizzling out. Yeah, it may have slowed down this week, oh God, but we're still pressing. We're still pressing. We're still pressing, oh God. Restore the press right now in our spirit. Oh, God, we just want to say thank you this morning. Lord God, we ask in your son's name that uh, those that are, are viewing with us, oh, God, that they would quiet their spirit. Yeah. That they would remove themselves from any distraction, oh, God, that they may receive your word this morning. That they may receive your instruction this morning, oh, God. Just want to say thank you. Oh, God. Cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just rise. Come on, come on. Come on, Holy Spirit. Preach this gospel on this day. Lower me down. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For a subject, we'll be using this one thing. Hallelujah. This one thing. Amen. Uh, so the question is, uh, are you focused on forgetting the past? I know some of us are right now due to the pandemic. Uh, we've been in it, what, 10 months, going on 11 months? I don't even know anymore. Amen. Uh, some of us want to forget that uh, yesterday Trump did not sign the bill to... Uh, extend uh, unemployment or to provide us with another stimulus check or small businesses with more funding to stay afloat. Amen? Forgetting the past, many people don't fully understand what that means. They wonder, how can I forget something that's happened to me? 
be it good or bad. And all day long we're faced with the pandemic, uh, uh, the, the changes from it. Uh, it has affect our going and our coming, our rising and our going down. So how can I forget this? One definition of the word forget is to disregard intentionally. You know, like pay no attention, ignore it, or to overlook it. What the author would like for us to understand is that you have to first choose to disregard your past, including the good and the bad, so that it doesn't keep you from moving forward. Amen? These masks will not and should not keep you from moving forward. I often come in contact with people and I observe uh, and how they'll get out their car to go in the store, right? to get that one item or whatever needs that they really want. And they'll do like this. Oh, I forgot my mask. So they go back and get the mask, right? To move forward. Amen. Amen. So no matter what we're going through right now, God is telling us that we have to press. We have to continue to move forward. If you think about it long enough, even our past victories can sometimes keep us from rising higher. If we don't let go of the old, we'll never be able to embrace the new. Amen. We got to let go of what's going on with what's going on with us right now. So, but the new is to touch God. That's what the new is, to embrace him. The new is to hold on to God's unchanging hand. The setting for the day, while incarcerated in Rome, Paul wrote this letter to the church in Philippi with specific issues in mind, amen? As with his other letters, Paul's ultimate goal is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Jesus didn't get up for nothing. He rose for your sins and for mine. Amen. So, what gift did you give Jesus this Christmas? Mm, I keep going back to that word in that pastor. Whew. Again, casting his own experience in terms that relate to the Philippians, Paul acknowledges that he has not yet obtained this goal. It will, however, continue to be the focus of his Christian walk in the days that lie ahead. It's a process, y'all. But we got to keep moving forward in the power and in the strength of Jesus. Like each one of us, when he looked back over his life, the Apostle Paul recognized that he had a great deal behind him. I know I do. I got, I got over 25 years of being set free from drug addiction. Yet here he published his decision to forget those things which were behind. It's behind me. My active addiction is behind me. But addiction is forever prevalent. Amen? But I don't have to Remember how it was so much in order to keep pressing forward because, see, my foundation is different now. On Christ, the solid rock, I'm standing. And all other ground is sinking sand. Needless to say, this is difficult to do. However, if it is something that we are able to do, it may become one of the best things we ever did. We are able to live. We are able to breathe. We are able to move. Amen? As this letter to the Philippians revealed to us today, he had a reason to forget what was behind. See, he had an aristocratic lineage. He had a first-class education. He had a life of adherence to a strict Pharisaic moral code. He had years of persecuting the church. 
He was the one who held the coats of those who had stoned Stephen, the first Christian martyr in which during that period, Paul's name was Saul, and that's found in Acts 7, 57 and 58. He had shipwrecks, beatings, and so much more. Paul had seen the downside of life, and he had also known prosperity. As he suggests, both sides offer temptations, amen? Just like Paul, we, are, we have all done things for which we are ashamed. And we still live in the tension of what we have been and what we want to be. Mm. Although Paul was writing from prison, joy is a dominant theme in this letter. The secret of his joy is grounded in his relationship with Christ. So no matter where you are, in your darkness or in your bondage, if you know the Lord as your personal Savior, he is with you. He will give you peace. He will give you joy. We as Christians and people in general desperately want to be happy but are tossed and turned by daily successes, failures, and even inconveniences. We ought to be joyful in every circumstance. Even when things are going badly, even when darkness appears, even when we feel like complaining, even when no one else is joyful, we should be joyful. Even though unemployment wasn't extended, we should be joyful. Even though we didn't get that 600 or 1200 stimulus check, we still should be joyful. Because the last time I checked, it was God who woke me up this morning. It was the last time I checked, it was God who started me on my way. The last time I checked, it was God who covered me and provided for me all week long. Somebody need to tell the Lord thank you. Christ still reigns, rules, and abide. As believers, we can have joy because Christ resides in us. We can rejoice at all times. As believers, because of our hope in Christ and the fact that he resides in us, we can let go of past guilt and look forward to what God will help us become. We got to change some things. And how do we do that? We talked about it in Sunday school. We have to repent. But guess what? <laughs> some of us here won't let go. And some of us here won't repent. Why is that? Overseer, I'm glad you asked. Are your eyes still fixed on the past or fixed on Jesus? It's so easy to let the past and distractions of the world and the cares of everyday life change your focus, make you feel less than, tricked, deceived, unworthy, a failure, and even a fool. There's so many people feeling like that today because of this pandemic. Whatever you fix your eyes on, remember you open up your spirit to it. Remember, whatever you fix your eyes on, you open up your spirit to it. So if I open up myself to what our president isn't giving me, ah. Uh, I'm going to feel less than. I'm going to feel the lack. But if I open my eyes up to Jesus, I'm going to feel the peace. I'm going to feel the joy. I'm not only going to feel it, but I'm going to give it. Because, see, when I feel peaceful, when I feel joyful, if you're around me, you're going to feel it too. You can choose to fix your eyes on Jesus no matter what distractions of life are going on around you. But it's a choice. You see, when you fix your eyes on Jesus, you are opening yourself to the healer. 
How many times have we trusted what the doctor said instead of believing God as our chief physician? Amen. How many times have we been emotionally abused by the hands of another individual and even to ourselves inflicting pain? The Lord said, I'm releasing a wave of healing for those who have suffered abuse at the hands of others. You are no less loved or treasured in my kingdom. That's real love. You still may have the scars that will remind you from time to time of your past trauma, but you will no longer feel the effects from that pain. I am transporting you above those disturbing experiences to a place in the spirit where you can trust me to deal gently with you. Isaiah 40, 11. Ooh. No matter what you're going through, Whatever pain you may be feeling, whatever anxiety, God said he's right there. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, you are opening yourself to the deliverer. How often do we take matters into our own hands instead of being patient, trusting Jesus to inspire and direct us to set us free? Oh, my God. I can't tell you how many times I said I wasn't going to get high anymore. I wasn't going to use drugs. I can't tell you. And then I tried to do it by myself to be set free and delivered. But all oh, that day came when I called on the name of Jesus. And I said, I'm just tired. I'm sick and tired of being tired. He heard my cry. And it's been over 25 years, and I'm still pressing forward. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, you're opening yourself to the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the provider, the redeemer, and the strong tower of refuge. Do you want peace today? Whew. Do this one thing. Let go of the past and fix your eyes on Jesus. Draw close to him so that you can find a place of peace and feel his joy. Even in all of Jesus' suffering, he had joy. His joy was for you and his joy was for me. His peace was for you and his peace was for me. He didn't let go. He didn't give up. He didn't give in. Next, Paul is telling us to reach forth. Reach forward, not backwards. Mm. Reach forward. Not backwards. Look straight ahead. You know, when you look straight ahead, it's almost like having a uh, tunnel vision. That's what we have to do. No looking back. No more yesterday. We must move forward. We're getting ready to go into 21. And it's unfortunate there's been some unresolved business in 2020, right? We tried to fix it. We tried to take care of it. But it's time to give it to God. So we can move with peace and joy in the 21. The God I serve will fix it. He's able to do the impossible. Fix your eyes on him and allow him to work in your life so that you can experience the victory he has in store for you right here on this earth. You know, we spend all day, most of the day, some days, even part of the day, trying to fix something that we can't. But let me, let me, let me just open your mind up to this. You're not supposed to. It's not for you to fix. But if it's supposed to be fixed, this is how you fix it. It's real simple. Fix your eyes on Jesus. 
and tell them all about it. And when you do that, that, that anxiety, that dead weight, all of that is gone. Mm. The last thing we need to understand in verse 14, Paul is encouraging the church of Philippi to make it personal and take action. He says, even though I'm behind these prison bars, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Understand he's not perfect. He's in jail. And he had not arrived. He didn't know it all. But this one thing he did know, he wants to see his Savior's face. He wants to make it into heaven. And see, that's the difference in Paul and you. Some people out here just want to stay here on this earth. Ah, but I beg the difference. You ought to prepare yourself to see Jesus' face. Because down here is just temporary. We put too much energy in down here. But the word of God tells us that we are to think on the heavenly treasures and not here on earth. Just like Paul, you got to press. Just got to press your way through. You got to press your way through life trials and tribulations. We will press on for the battles are not ours. They are the Lord's. Give it to the Lord. We will and we can press on because the race is not given to the swift, but to the strong and to those that endure to the end. We will press on because the suffering of this present time cannot compare to the glory that will be revealed in us. Therefore, we will press on because the best is yet to come. Greater is coming. Greater may be tomorrow, but you got to get through the day. So I encourage you that in order to get to tomorrow, put some peace in your life. Ask Jesus to restore the joy in your life. It doesn't matter what happened in your history. It's time to forget what lies behind. If you haven't already made the choice today to look forward, what you need to. Trust that God has a better future in store for you. Mm. Trust that he's working behind the scenes on your behalf. And has already gone before the situation. You know, I tell people, uh, my job is a job I really believe that God placed me there. Whew. Because I have so much time. Doing his work. I spend less time taking people's temperatures and screening them. But he gives me 12 hours to witness, to evangelize, to read his word. I can't say this is my career, John. But it's so fulfilling. It's so rewarding. The benefits. I can't get home. Well, when I get off, I, 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 I can't clock out right away here lately. People saying, can you please pray for me? Or they'll come to me. You got time to listen. I thank God that my life is not busy, that I'm like, oh, no, because I, I got this to do. I'm doing what God said for me to do. And it feels good. It brings me peace. It brings me joy. As I close, I encourage you to 
look with the eyes of faith and let God show you his resources. God is the source of resources. If you don't see God working in your life, the problem may be your spiritual eyesight, not God's power. Set yourself to know him. There is power in the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This one thing, this one thing, we need to press towards the mark of the high calling. This one thing, forget what's behind. We don't have to reach back no more. If your year has been anything like mine, I, 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 I'm reaching forward. There's nothing that I need to touch behind me. Nothing. It's been a good year. Because God gave me the strength. And to victory, amen. Brought me through, and he's still bringing me through. So I thank God this morning. As we stand all over the church, Someone may be saying, so what is the takeaway, Ram Dukes, from this message? Well, I encourage you this day, don't dwell on your past. Instead, grow in the knowledge of God by concentrating on your relationship with him. Know that God loves you in spite of yourself. You're forgiven. And then move on to a life of faith and obedience. That's the key. Look forward to a fuller and more meaningful life because of your hope in Christ. There may be one who needs Jesus today. We done celebrated his birthday. You received all these wonderful gifts. But you need to ask yourself, what did I give back to Jesus? What did I give Jesus? There is a gift that you can give him right now. And that's your life. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sin, that would make him so happy. He would be so pleased with you right now. So if you want to give your life to Christ, just confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Confess your sin and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead and you're saved. Real simple. That's a good gift to give Jesus. Those of us who are saved, and you might not have really given Jesus a gift. How about renewing your relationship and faith and obedience? Jesus, this is your time. I honestly believe the stronger you solidify that relationship, your new year will be so much better and brighter. But before we get to the new year, we got to end this one, amen? So what better way to end the year than having a better relationship with Christ. He's waiting on us. Ooh. 
There's nothing like them. Will there be more? Eternal God, our Father, we come to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to proclaim your gospel. Holy Spirit, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for your love and your support and your guidance. Thank you so much. Help us, oh God, right now to remember we don't have to reach behind to move forward. Your word tells us that we don't have to, but your word tells us how to move forward. Ooh, help us to move forward. Help us to study your word more. Help us, oh God, to seek you more. Help us, oh God, to be that bold witness or so that bold evangelist to tell those who don't know you that you are alive and that you save to the utmost. Ah, Jesus saves. Lord, we thank you for keeping these doors open one more time. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank you, oh God, for our obedience. Ooh. And adhering to the word and the voice of the Holy Spirit to move and when not to move. But always encouraging us to love you even the more. We say thank you. In Jesus' name. Now may the grace and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. In Jesus' name. Amen.